we're realizing that small molecules may have a role for patients with HER2 alterations and maybe Zongertinib and this Bay drug and the NVL330 may be the new wave of the future. Just as much as the efficacy matters, so does the safety, so does the, the toxicity profile. And so one of the things that's exciting, I think, about these small molecule TKIs so far that we've seen is we have not seen any ILD, we have not seen pneumonitis. So that's exciting to be able to tell patients, right? Today, we're diving into our second episode of two-part CME series on HER2 positive non-small cell lung cancer. We have really anchored in lung cancer for some time talking about HER2 mutations specifically, um, but that's really been our traditional way of defining HER2 positive non-small cell lung cancer. But that's not to say that there are, aren't, aren't other more meaningful uh, tests that need to be done for defining HER2 positive disease. So ERB2 amplification is just as important. HER2 overexpression is also important. They have clinical implications. Um, but historically, yes, we've been referred to, we've been anchored on this HER2 mutation status. The first thing is being able to appropriately interpret these ongoing, ever complex next generation sequencing panels from alphabet soup of different labs that are doing this, right? So the first thing you want to do is make sure, are you dealing with an EGFR alteration or are you dealing with a HER2 alteration? Because there's EGFR exon 20 insertions and then there's also HER2, it's HER2 exon 20 alterations. Second thing is that these HER2 alterations or HER2 mutations are typically seen only in about 2 to 4% of the population. But something that makes it a little bit more unique is that we often see CNS metastases at diagnosis or very quick to have, you know, escape metastatic disease to the sanctuary site there. So what are we doing in the first line landscape for patients with newly diagnosed HER2 positive non-small cell lung cancer? Right now, what we have approved is platinum-based chemotherapy. And so that's really the staple for what we're offering patients. That's really what we're pulling and reaching for in our clinic. If we can't offer them a clinical trial, right, we have to take a moment to say, if there's a clinical trial available at your center, at a nearby center, please explore those options. It should not always be a last resort. So that's really important to mention. Now, the addition of immunotherapy is interesting. It's, it's feasible and retrospective data kind of varies in terms of what we see with what that additional benefit is of adding immune checkpoint blockade to platinum-based therapy. So when we're giving chemo and immunotherapy or we're giving antibody drug conjugates like trastuzumab drugs, TCAN, these are kind of big, clunky, clumsy things that these molecules can't get into the blood-brain barrier to penetrate these brain metastases. So that's why the addition of these two agents that are sort of getting highlighted now in this space, which I'm so excited to talk about, Zongertinib based off the Bemian study, and then the Bay 292 based off the SOHO 01 study um, are sort of smaller oral agents, small molecules that have good CNS penetration based off of the data. Um, and there's also another drug that I do want to talk about. It's the NVL330 um, from New Valent, a compound, small molecule compound, also having outstanding CNS penetration preclinical. One of the things that's exciting, I think, about these small molecule TKIs so far that we've seen is we have not seen any ILD. We have not seen pneumonitis. So that's exciting to be able to tell patients, right, because we get really nervous about that side effect with TDXD. Um, on the contrary, we are seeing increased rates of diarrhea and rash. With more treatment options, particularly with different mechanism of action, sequencing and managing side effect is going to be very critical. Make sure to check out our first episode in this series where we had a chance to focus more on testing and characteristics of HER2-positive lung cancer.